Team keep it clean. I, I knew today was gonna be a great Thursday. I absolutely loved that presser. It was probably my favorite one this off season. You see, I had to change the background to purple. They got me want to throw on some purple shades, but and, and I see Rashad Bateman and James Crochet. They trying to sway how I feel about the wire. They they trying to change my opinion, but I'm sticking to it. But hopefully. Seeing will be believing and they really show us something. But I just, I, I love today so much. It started off with John Harbaugh, but we gonna start with Lamar Jackson. Let me tell you all from Jump Team, keep it clean. Sit down, relax, because I feel like we are gonna be here just a little while. This is the last presser that we're getting from them up until I think training camp. Cause we, we got a long ways to go. Uh, unless they make some crazy move, some crazy blockbuster announcement, then we ain't going to be hearing from these guys for a while. And even on that note, the way that some stuff was said got me kind of thinking about a different decision and how I'm feeling about that. But let's talk about everything. I love y'all. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for supporting. Let's sit down and let's have a conversation. Now, I know the press has started with John Harbaugh. But we getting straight to Lamar Jackson. Now, with Lamar Jackson, this press conference, to me, it showed his maturity and the fact that he's came a long way when it's come to speaking to the media. But it also showed me that Lamar Jackson knows I got this. This is my team. Uh, that contract, oh, I'm, I'm going to get what I want. I'm going to get it. Because the way that he answered questions, the way that he handled questions showed, like, hey, he knows, like, is his way or the highway? I don't think the Ravens want to go down the highway, but it, it really showed that like, this was negotiating at his finest. He was up there doing live negotiating straight from the presser. But let's let's get into what Lamar had to say because it, it was such a beautiful thing to be able to hear Lamar talk again because we hadn't heard from Lamar in a long time. We've seen little tweets that he put, but to actually hear him speak on matters, let's just get into it. Anyway, he said it feels good to be back. Feels good to be back. Um, he was asked, what's the reason that he didn't come to OTAs? And he said he just wanted to stay away and, stay away and just grind. That's it. Uh, and he said that he actually asked the guys ahead of time if it was okay with them. So, see, this is why it's always nice to hear directly from the source. I, I know a lot of times us as fans, a lot of time with media people, we can see some stuff and we'll be like, oh, man, what does that mean? What does that mean? What is it? And, and it's fun to speculate about. It. It's fun to wonder like, and try to come to our own con conclusions and whatnot about what different things mean. But then to hear it directly from the source because he said that he talked to the guys. He talked to his receivers and stuff and, and the team and whatnot and told them or asked them, hey, is it OK? Are you all cool with that? So they weren't just left in the dark. And this actually confirms what Marlon Humphrey said. Um, it confirms what I think Mark Andrews said the same thing, too. But I know Marlon Humphrey for sure. He said, hey, he talked to Lamar and, and he said Lamar will be back. So that just it, it made it make a lot. Oh, it already made sense, but it made it make even more sense. Um, he said that he knew the chemistry would, would be there since he already worked with Bateman and Prochet before. So he knew once he came back, the chemistry wasn't going nowhere. Um, and he said that they, they definitely got training camp and all that to work on that too. Now, he said the, the absence was not contract related at all. Uh, cause that was a big thing that a lot of media have been saying, Hey, he's skipping cause he ain't got no contract. Oh, he ain't showing up to voluntary OTAs cause he ain't got no contract. He said it wasn't contract related at all. Uh, Lamar said he, that he has had conversations about his contract with EDC. And he said that he's actually had them over the past couple of days since he's been back. So I was like, Oh, okay. Now, now that's, uh, that's interesting because y'all know me. I've been saying, I don't think that, um, with the, the contract, I don't think he's he going to do one till next year. I don't think he's going to try to get one till next year because I think he really wants to be like, hey, let me, uh, let me show y'all. But with a lot of the things that he said, and we'll get into more in a little bit, but it sounds like stuff is moving forward when it comes to a contract. Now, um, some other things that he said that uh, he expects to play with the Ravens for the rest of his career. I know a lot of Ravens fans say, <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lamar. Even though he said something like this before. He said it before. Now, hey, you could say that, but a, a contract still got to be signed. It still got to be agreed upon and all that, all the terms and conditions and all that. So Ravens and Lamar, they still got some work to do if that is going to happen. Um, he said that he doesn't buy into it when people say that they wouldn't step on a football field without a contract. So this is when Lamar Jackson 
this is where he kind of start rocking the boat a little bit. Because it's like, all right, he, I, I don't buy into that when people say stuff like that. Oh, they wouldn't step onto a field uh, without a contract because a lot of the media has said that. They say, oh, Lamar should not play football. He shouldn't do anything. He shouldn't practice. He shouldn't do anything until he got a new deal. Said, no, I don't buy into that. But then it continued. Um, he was asked about him saying that uh, he isn't worthy of a contract without a Super Bowl and if he still feels that way. And he said that he does deserve a contract, but he still wants a Super Bowl. Because Lamar said a little while back, like, no, I don't deserve a contract until I get a Super Bowl. But now, and this is why a lot of the things that he said got me feeling like, wait a minute, maybe this contract, it may not be pushed out so far as a matter of fact. But with him saying that, it's like, oh, okay. That, that thinking is different. Now, now he, he, he about that money. He's about that money and I ain't mad at it. But we'll see what happens. Um, he said that they've had conversations about his contract since he's been back. Um, now, he was asked, how much has Deshaun Watson's contract impacted you? He said, nothing at all. I'm a man of my own. <laughs> you are definitely a man of your own. We know that. But we know that Deshaun Watson contract impacts Lamar big time. He ain't got to say it. He ain't got to put it out there, but again, we know. Ravens know. Lamar knows. We all know that Deshaun Watson contract impacts Lamar so much. Just based off of principle alone, Lamar could be like, hey, I'm team keep it clean. All that mess that's going on, whether it's true or not, ah, that's, that ain't got nothing to do with me. And, and that's not me. That's not me at all. So the, the fact that there's nothing pending alone, that makes the deal start at 2.30 guaranteed. <laughs> anyway, um, he said that he feels stronger and faster. Uh, he was asked about the Hollywood trade when that went down. He said that coach had called him about it, uh, and he said that he didn't buy into it. He didn't think it was going to go down. He thought they were just talking. Uh, but he said when it, when it actually happened that he was hurt because that's his boy. But he said it's part of the business. And he said he was shocked. But he kept repeating that is part of the business. It's part of the business. And he said that like three or four times uh, within like 15, 20 seconds. But it's part of the business because he knows it's part of the business. This presser from Lamar Jackson was part of his business and showed like to me, oh, yeah, again, he is about that business. He, he wasn't messing around with this one. This Again, I think this has been... Lamar's most uh, commanding presser that he's ever had as a Baltimore Raven. This has been the presser that I feel like he has been in the, the most control he's ever been. I felt like his confidence was through the roof. It was through the roof because of how he carried himself, how he answered questions, how he didn't answer some questions. But we're going to keep getting into that in a little bit. Um, he said that he didn't really change his mechanics. He said he just got sharper because uh, sometimes he get a little bit loose when he when it came to throwing the ball. Uh, they he was asked about if it's hard to tune out when the national media keeps talking about you. Uh, he said yeah. He said sometimes it's clickbait. He said like with Chris Sims. He said Chris Sims baited him. He said he baited him and, and, and he ended up biting the bait. Um, but it, it is what it is, man. Now he was asked if Hollywood Brown had ever complained to him about the offense again this this was Lamar's most mature presser ever and he did not fall for the bait he talked about how Chris Sims got him Chris Sims baited him he fell for it but in this presser he ain't go for none of that Lamar said he didn't remember if Hollywood expressed his frustrations with the offense when he was with the Ravens he said after the games they just be partying in the car listening to music so see how Lamar he, he d diverted away from that he said, oh, no, 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 no. Yep, nope, nope. Because if, if he would have said, yeah, yeah, Hollywood complained to me about the offense. How do you feel about the offense? Yeah, he said, and you know Lamar is super team, 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 team. Super team. So, yeah, he, he avoided that completely. And he didn't even put Hollywood down in the process, too. Because he could have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, Hollywood used to complain to me all the time. After so many games, he's complaining to me like, man, I ain't feeling this. I don't like this. All He could have done that, but he didn't do it. So I love that. Um, he asked, uh, he was asked, would you prefer to have a contract done before the beginning of the year? See, this way it got even better. And he said, it's a conversation. It's a conversation. He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He said, it's a conversation. 
Negotiating at his finest, baby. And then this, ooh, he, said, he was asked, do you still play week one if it's not a deal? He said, we're in conversation. <laughs> hey, negotiating at his finest. That's what this, like 75% of Lamar Jackson part of the presser was him negotiating. Him publicly showing the Ravens like, hey, y'all know who I am. You know what I do for you. It's time that you do something for me in a major way. A major way. This was Lamar Jackson politely and but publicly letting them know you want to make it happen. We can make it happen. I'm, I'm talking to you and I'm letting people know I'm talking to you. You obviously know I'm talking to you. But, hey, Lamar put that pressure on the Ravens publicly, but respectfully. He ain't doing it in no nasty way, but with him saying what he said, and uh, we in conversation. He didn't, he didn't uh, agree to, or he didn't uh, confirm, but he also didn't deny. When, oh, you gonna play week one? We in conversations. Would you step on the foot? We in conversations. Lamar Burry, we in conversations. <laughs> I love it, man. I'm gonna start using the same thing too. Um, he also talked about him and Rashad uh, said that they had chemistry off bat when they worked out in February. But again, they had chemistry off the rip when uh, when Rashad Bateman first came back from his injury. And I was just I remember being so shocked at that. Like, man, I expect and they threw Rashad out there. They were like, no, you are first round pick. You're going to play all these snaps, my friend. And he was out there a lot. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be nice to see uh, how that continues. Uh, he said he's usually about 205, 208 pounds. Right now he's 220. Said he just wanted to bulk up and see how he felt. And um, they asked him, well, how, how'd you do it? He says, Spence Fit, my trainer. So shout out to Spence Fit getting that promo. I, I know they loving it. And Lamar been promoting him on Instagram and stuff too. Um, he was asked, if you don't have an extension, will you be at training camp or playing week one? We're having conversations about it. I don't know. We're having conversations about it. I don't know. He's putting pressure on the Ravens, man. It's clear as day. He is putting pressure on the Ravens. Hey, show me that bread. And that is probably the biggest quote from this whole presser that really might have changed my mind as to, because again, before I thought, oh yeah, Lamar ain't doing no deal this year. But now it's seeming like Lamar may actually do a deal this year because of the way that this presser was conducted by Lamar Jackson. That pre he's putting the pressure on the Ravens. Hey, Y'all say, you want to offer me the bread? You say you're willing to talk? Okay, we talking. But that conversation, it, it got to improve. It got to improve. So, <laughs> this is lovely, man. Ooh, that, 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 he going to get a lot of money. Lamar Jackson is going to get so much money. So much money. Anyway, um, he was asked, was there a reason you didn't want to talk to Ravens this offseason? He said, yeah, because he was away and just wanted to grind. Um, and now, a couple of questions before. Um, he was asked about uh, the restaurant. He was congratulated about the restaurant. You ate yet? Um, and then he said that initially he wanted to incorporate the number eight um, into the, the restaurant. And I forgot what he said. The other name that they were thinking of was. But then he was like, no, but if we win the Super Bowl, I want to change my number to one. So anyway, uh, he talked about, he said that his, his team helped him come up with that name for the restaurant. So then this question, he was asked... Um, and this, he, someone asked him directly. They said, who's your team? Who's involved in your team? Like, and, and he said, like, when he talks to the Ravens, and, and he said that he mentioned, when he mentioned team earlier, he said that he wasn't talking about when he talks to the Ravens. He was talking about his team for the restaurant. My guy, he got this PR thing down. They tried to catch him slipping. Because you know Lamar Jackson is so private when it comes to the people who are in his camp. He is so private when it comes to the people who are in his team. I respect the reporter for being straight up like, hey, who's your team? Who, 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 who is it? Let, let us know. But Lamar, he ain't fall for it. He ain't fall for it. And even the fact that he not only did he not fall for it, but again, he diverted back to the restaurant. He said, that's what I was talking about. So he knew he knew what was going on. Oh, my goodness. He, knows. <laughs> he talked about Tyler Linderbaum. Shout out to Linda Flinder. Uh, he said the chemistry with him is great. He said that uh, he's pretty fast for a center. Uh, and he said that Linda, that when he got picked off by Daylon Hayes yesterday, he said that Linda Bond was chasing him down. 
Um, and he said over the next few weeks, he'll get with his guys and build chemistry. And he said the football season is here and it has started already. Mm. Great, great job, Lamar Jackson. Great job. This was excellent. Again, he's, he's saying, Ravens, what's up? What's up? Because see now Lamar Jackson, he's playing the negotiating games. He's doing the negotiating tactics. And guess what? He ain't got no agents. So he gets to do all of this himself. And, and since he doesn't have an agent, everything that he says that comes out of his mouth, it gets magnified and amplified. And you got to listen to it that much closer because he is the one that's calling his own shots. So, and with Lamar right now, since he knows he's the shooter, ooh, ho, 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 ho. yeah, he, 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 again, he let Ravens know, respectfully, of course, but he let Ravens know, like, hey, step it up, my friends, step it up. Now, skipping around, uh, James Urban also talked, and John Harbaugh did too, and we're going to get to those in a little bit, but first, we got to get to James Prochet and Rashad Bateman, and I said, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to just... I got to stay strong because I still want the Ravens to add a significant guy. But these, these guys, they, they really trying to make me believe in them. And I want to. And again, it's, it's so much unknown. We talk about it all the time. For me, it's, it's the unknown at wide receiver for the Ravens. That's my big question mark. Um, but James, hearing James Prochet and hearing Rashad Bateman and, and just the maturity level and the fact that they are just, it, it just sounds like, they are ready, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, ready to accept that responsibility. See, I'm over here talking about Ravens receivers and, and my, my mind and my mouth not even trying to let me say it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so Prochet said he had a flight to catch because uh, somebody asked him, you must be late for a flight or something. He said, yeah, you're right. Uh, and they asked, what have you seen that's different from Lamar? Um, and Bateman said that he's just about his business. He said, we all know who he is. We just tired of the Lamar Jackson slander. And that's something that Bateman said on the Marlon Humphrey podcast, too. Uh, Proche said it's only been and there only is one Lamar Jackson in this league. Uh, Bateman said Lamar doesn't really care what anyone says about him. Uh, he said that being a black man, um, that's what we pride ourselves on. He shows us that it's OK to be us. And oof. That was something right there. And we all uh, understand exactly uh, what he was talking about. Now, Prochet, he said the chemistry is great, uh, but it's great as people, too. And I really appreciated this part because it's very, very true. Um, he said that watching film, knowing each other's tendencies, uh, he said that stuff matters even more. He said it's not just an off-season thing. So he was talking about the on-field chemistry, but also he said the off-field chemistry is just as, if not even more, important than the on-field chemistry. And that's real right there. That's real because it is just because you work with somebody, somebody does a good job at their job. You do a great job at your job. And even when you guys do work together, y'all both do a great job together. If that if, if y'all hate each other, if y'all don't like each other, if y'all don't vibe with each other, y'all don't click with each other, then the work may be straight, but it's not as good as it could possibly be. But if y'all do click with each other, if y'all do vibe with each other, and of course, every situation is different. But the work can be that much better and that much more enjoyable, especially depending on whatever it is that you do. Um, whew, this was something right here. Anyway, uh, he said that uh, Bateman said that he didn't know there was a chance that Hollywood uh, could end up being traded. Uh, he said that they both might end up. They probably both going to go down to his camp. Now, I wonder if that's the one happening on July 9th, the same day as Lamar Jackson, too. Um, I know Hollywood is in Hollywood. Lamar Jackson is in Coral Springs. So we'll see. Um, if you could be at two places at one time, huh? Anyway, uh, Proche said that it is frustrating that he hasn't gotten on the field as much as he'd like, but he said that you control what you can control. Uh, Ryan Mink asked about people doubting this wide receiver group. And Bateman said, why us? He said, you, you see all these rookie receivers going off all the time, but, but why us? Why people doubting us? Uh, he said that we embrace it. We're learning from Lamar that is just noise. Hopefully it is. Again, ho hopefully, uh, hopefully Ravens proved me wrong all the way. Hopefully these receivers proved me wrong. And again, not that they can't do it. My feelings is not that they can't do it, but it's just uh, the unknown. It's unknown. 
So hopefully when we do know, <laughs> we find out that they're ballers. Um, with Pro Shave, he said that they got a good group of guys who they, where they really mess with each other outside of football. And again, he talked about the chemistry not only with Lamar, but with the other receivers too. He said at SMU, he used to take the young guys with him, and, and he has that same approach with the undrafted free agents since he's like one of the elder statesmen in the room. It's like, wow, a, a third year receiver is one of the older receivers? In, that's crazy. Like the oldest receivers are Devin Duvernay and James Prochet, Rashad Bateman going into his second year, and Tylen Wallace going into his second year. And Benjamin Victor, he going into his second year. And then the rest undrafted free agents. For now. We'll see what the Ravens do to. Um, Prochet did confirm that they're going to be coming down to Florida with Lamar. So look out for that. He said that with, uh, I think it was Bateman that brought up Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. He said what they have, uh, it comes from working. It's from grinding together. So they, they trying to get that with Lamar. Um, they were asked what their, what their initial reaction was when Hollywood got traded. Uh, and if they felt like, okay, now it's an opportunity for them. And Prochet said every day is an opportunity, whether Hollywood was here or not. So Prochet just been waiting, man. And then my, my favorite part about their part uh, was uh, they were asked about blocking. And Prochet said, if someone is throwing you around, then he's basically saying that he could whip you in a fight. So Prochet said, it's important to not let people throw you around. He said, because you can't whoop me. So shout out to Prochet and Bateman. Um, it was nice just, it was really nice seeing their vibe. Uh, how they were together, just that en energy and that chemistry that they clearly got. They they clearly got it. Um, but, hey, now it's about, well, after training camp and stuff in preseason, it's about on the field, how they do on the field. So, anyway, uh, to Harbaugh. Harbaugh actually started off this presser. Um, he said that Snoop, he got tendonitis, so they'll rest him. Uh, so he's throwing a lot of passes. He just need a little rest, got to relax a little bit. Uh, Jalen Ferguson, he said he got an ankle sprain. Nothing serious, though. He said Nick Boyle, he had a rest day. Uh, he was asked about Ronnie, J.K., Gus. He said they're all on schedule. But then he said, well, well, well what is a schedule, though? Um, and he said they'll see how they look when they come back. Uh, he said that Ronnie Stanley's ankle looks great. Um, and hopefully it is, man. That Because, again, Ronnie Stanley would change the trajectory of this, not only the offense, but this team. He would ch having him back and having him healthy and having him consistent would change the trajectory of this entire team because it makes them so much better like that, like instantly, right away. Um, but he said it's nice that they have other options just in case Ronnie Stanley isn't ready. So, yeah, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready, right? Um, now, with Falele, what John Harbaugh said, because he talked about him, he said he's up there as far as his weight. And he said that uh, he'll need to get used to playing in this league. It sounded like they want uh, Fire Lele to, to sort of slim down a little bit. That's what it sounded like to me. Um, with Michael Pierce, I was about to say Bernard Pierce. Whoa, y'all remember him? Remember Bernard Pierce? Who, the Super Bowl champ Bernard Pierce now, who ran behind Ray Rice. Anyway, uh, he said with Michael Pierce, the issue is a personal matter with his family. So he did say that. So, all right, cool. So Michael Pierce... Uh, hopefully it ain't nothing crazy Hopefully it ain't nothing like serious Anything like that But he get everything handled on his end And everything will be good uh, And that's whether he come play And I, I'm pretty sure he's gonna play But that's before football or not Whether he plays football or not Family is way more important than football So um, he said this parting message Since they're not gonna see a lot of these guys for a few weeks No drama No drama And I, and I could imagine like as a coach this has got to be the scariest time period for you uh, as a coach because no meetings, no none of the players. The players are sort of on a little vacation. They're going to be gone for a while. And it's like, man, like they are responsible for themselves. Those are your guys, though, because you as a coach, those, like, those, those are my guys. Those are my boys. So it's got to be, oh, man. That would drive me crazy. Um, but, hey, as long as you do everything that you could, you could possibly do, um, you just got to leave it in their hands. And that's it. So, hopefully it's smooth sailing and everybody come back and everything good to go. Um, he uh, said that it didn't feel like Lamar had a lack of chemistry. He said that the communication was something that he missed out on from OTAs. But, overall, he said Lamar was, Lamar was fine. Um, and he, he did say before Lamar even got up there, he said Lamar was going to meet with the wide receivers and tight ends down in Florida. So I guess Harbaugh wanted to break the news before Lamar. And I was surprised how they did this because I thought they were going to save Lamar for last. But they were like, nope, nope. They let Harbaugh go and they, Lamar came right after. I was like, oh, okay. That was surprising. 
Uh, and James Urban, he spoke after Lamar. He said Lamar has handled his business when he was away. And James Urban said that he can tell that Lamar Jackson has been working. He said the mechanics they've been using uh, have improved. And he said that Lamar being a hard worker, that hasn't changed at all. Even with his status, even, been, even him being one of the more notable quarterbacks in the league, he said the hard work didn't change at all. Uh, he said they remained in contact when, when he was away, when Lamar Jackson was away. Uh, he was asked, is the zip, the zip that Lamar has on the ball now, more fundamental than, bo or, or, than body strength? And he said the strength sure doesn't, doesn't hurt. Um, and, I mean, I, I have been seeing, like, the videos and stuff. Uh, with Lamar throwing the, the perfect spiral and whatnot. And that's cool. I don't really get too hyped over that. Like, even a couple years, was it last year? I mean, it might have actually been last year. Yeah, it was last year. I I got, yeah, it was last year because I think the pass was to Sammy Watkins. Where um, they showed a video of Lamar Jackson throwing. It was a touchdown in training camp, I think, but it was a wobbly pass. And it was like, oh, okay, who cares? Um, but, yeah, it, so it, me personally, I don't really get too hyped over those videos like that. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty pass. Yeah, that's nice. I got the one of them too. Now, hey, <laughs> yo, Ravens, y'all want to record me throwing some pretty passes. I'm with it all day. But... We, training camp and preseason and really regular season, we'll, we'll see all that stuff. As long as it's getting there, as long as it's on the money, whether it's pretty, whether it's ugly, hey. Now, sure, the, the prettier passes are probably easier to catch because if a ball's coming at you like this, okay, cool. But if the ball's coming at you like, okay, then yeah, it gets a little harder to catch that way. Um, uh, back to James Urban. Uh, he said that his first reaction when he saw Lamar Jackson and this, this love right here. He said his first reaction when he saw Lamar Jackson was that he just wanted to give him a hug. Because he hadn't seen him since January. And I'm like, ooh, that, I would have gave him a big hug too. You ain't seen him since January and it's June. That's five months. Hold up. Yeah, January, February, March, April, May, June. Yeah, that's five months. Had to make sure that math was correct. But yeah. So um, you can tell he got a lot of love for Lamar. Um, I really thought Lamar Jackson would have got him a job by now. Uh, but I'm, I'm, su I'm surprised. I, uh, I remember thinking Greg Roman would have been gone by now, be a head coach somewhere. I thought Wink would have been gone by now, be a head coach somewhere. I thought James Urban probably would have went to go with Greg Roman and go be Greg Roman's offensive coordinator uh, somewhere, somewhere by now. I thought that all after 2019. After that season, I'm like, oh, yeah, all of them gone. All of them are gone. But nope, they stayed. And I was, I was glad that they stayed. I remember. I'm like, yes, we kept them. So, but, you know, things happen. Then COVID happened, right? Then injuries happened in 2021, and, and now we're here, 2022. So, this is uh, the year of no excuses. But, again, I, I really appreciated this presser. Um, I know we went on a little bit long. I can't even tell how long this video is. And when I'm watching, I'm probably going to be like, oh, wow, okay. I, I, did, I did forewarn y'all, though, that it was going to go a while because there was a lot to cover. But I enjoyed it. We got to soak this all in because, again, this is the last presser that we're getting for a long time. So, now, like... We have really entered slow season now. But get this. It's June 16th today. Uh, July, August. In two months. Two months from now is preseason. Two months from now is preseason. And then three months is regular season. This offseason, I said it before. For me, it's going by extremely fast. I actually wish it would slow down a bit. I know that sounds crazy to some of y'all. Like, oh, yeah, I want football back right here, right now. Me, I actually wanted to slow down a bit. This offseason has been nonstop. I appreciate it. And I love it. And been enjoying it. But it has been nonstop. Literally nonstop. Um, but, yeah, I, it's, I, I appreciate it and have been enjoying covering this team and everything that they have done and have not done and what they're doing, what they plan to do, and all that good stuff. And we will continue to do that. And I appreciate you all supporting and watching. Thank you. I love y'all. Um, I'm sure you're going to get plenty of questions from subscribers, but yeah, now, now we are really entering the slow season, uh, but we still going to try to make it as fun as possible for y'all. I appreciate y'all. We, again, only two months till preseason, two months. That's nothing. Two months and training camp was starts at like the end of July, I think. So we're literally right there, man. We are right there. But I do wonder, with Derek Wolf, with them releasing him with that injury settlement, that opens up a roster spot. So I wonder who's going to take that roster spot. Anyway, I love y'all, team. Keep believing. I appreciate y'all. We out. Oh, I thought that was the end of the video. We out now.